The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Taramina's on OAA Native Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud, those watching on YouTube, and also those watching on OAA Native Television. We got a lot to talk about this week here. We're going to preview, of course, the two state final matchups in Divisions 1 and 4, which have OA schools involved. Also, we're going to recap Clarkson Volleyball's tough loss to um, to um, Farm Tills Mercy and, their, and what's next for them. And also, we're going to look at basketball season coming up starting next week. So we do have one of our um, – we do have our um, – one of our um, two coaches that we're going to toss to talk to both coaches um, who are in the state championship game with OA – surrounding OA schools. We're going to start with um, with our good friends at South Arson Tech with Coach Aaron Marshall here. Coach, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you having me. Um, obviously, of course, last week we talked about um, the game with West Bloomfield, and it was going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, I want to know your initial thought process. I mean, like um, early on when you, had, you saw the power outage going on there, and then all of a sudden, like um, – you know what were your what were you guys thinking about when you had that power outage before the start of kickoff? Yeah, man. So you know we didn't know what happened. Um, about thirty minutes into the warm up, you know, scoreboard was working, give or take, and then um, all of a sudden we looked up, the music they were playing had stopped, the scoreboard had cut off. So that's when I kind of realized, you know, the power must have went out. Um, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I mean, I, I know. I guess things happen. I guess what can you do? I mean, there's it's nothing- kind of a testament to our team you know we really don't kind of worry about the stuff we can't control you know what i'm saying we control we can control it happened so we had to keep it moving and obviously you know you let the, you didn't let the power outage phase you guys or anything like that and then like of course it started off the um the game started off really interesting of course um you guys took the lead early of course with the um with the touchdown early on then west bloomfield responded and it went kind of with a back and forth seesaw I mean, like obviously, you kind of knew what, what was expected, of course, with both with both two heavyweight teams going at it. Yeah, man. Um, you know, it's real important for us to get a fast start. Um, you know, we played them the first time. West Bloomfield got the fast start on us, and they was up big at half. So it was re- really important for us to kind of really, you know, focus in on starting well, not just finishing well. Um, so I think going up early, kind of getting that momentum in the halftime, fourteen seven. I think that was huge. We caused two turnovers, I believe, in the first half. I think that was big for us. And then when you look at, of course, at second half, obviously the, um, you know, of course, when you look at the momentum, obviously you guys take the touchdown. Um, you take the lead on the touchdown with Zeke, obviously um, getting the lead. And then you see West Bloomberg go down and score, take a one-point lead. Um so when you look at it with about 59 seconds left to go, it's like an eternity in football. Of course, you kind of watched the Lions Bears game yesterday. Look at the Lions never say die attitude. It kind of reminded me about you guys. You know, what I mean, when you went in, when you went in there, and um, you know, when West Bloomfield we took the lead late, you guys went down there. You guys went down and you guys went down to get it to about the one yard line. So what was that thought process in the final drive leading to that touchdown? So yeah, man, as um when they score, it's funny. As a coach, of course, right, I'm watching my defense, and we don't want to give up no touchdowns at any time, right? Mm-hmm. But when it happened, two of my offensive coaches behind me both yelled at the same time, great. Literally yelled out the word great. I looked at them, and I, I wanted to punch them in their face. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, I know. I hear you. But, 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 but I understood where they was coming from, right? What they were mm-hmm. saying was, I'm glad they left us a minute and two timeouts left. So – you know, quickly, I, I kind of agree with them. You're right. It could be worse. They could have scored with no time left like we did. So the fact that left us a minute left, man, Isaiah came out there. I told him, I said, you don't got to get it all at once. If you see a lane take off, Isaiah looked at me again like I was kind of crazy. He was like, I got this. So, and then you saw the rest. Yep. Talk about that. Ex- having an experienced quarterback like Zeke. Of course, Zeke's your nephew. Um, Obviously, having a guy like that, you know what I mean? Like, you've been through it all. You've been through the ups. You've been through the downs. I mean, like, talk about, you know what I mean, like, that feeling of having your nephew as your quarterback and the lead, to lead you on that drive like he did. Um, it's huge, man. Um, you know, it's, it's his hard work that he put in. Like, the moment's never too big for that kid. 
Um, and that's the good thing about him, like his his mental, whether we up, down, got to score a winning drive, the, the moment doesn't, you know, exceed his game. And for, for me and for the rest of the team, clearly that reaps benefits because you can just see through the years, man, his, his relentless comebacks that he's done for us um, and kind of led the team on those drives. So, I mean, it's really huge um, that, you know, we have him in those times of need. And then, of course, he let he got that touchdown. Obviously, um, with that one yard run. Um, there had to be a lot of emotions for your kids, for the community. I mean, for your fans. Obviously, I saw the um, I watched the drive. I watched that touchdown, and I'm saying to myself, I was really, really happy for you guys to get, you know, to win that game, to get to your first state championship game appearance. Um, so, how did that feel like for you personally, and also the kids in the community? I mean, for me, man, I was just happy for the kids and the coaches. Like, it's – the kids work their tail off all year. You know, I know you all see us in the season, but if you all were here to actually witness, you know, our off-season training and our 6 a.m. workouts and the weight room and conditioning and, and you know, they, they train on their own, the things that these young men have put themselves through to put themselves in position to be here today is what I was most proud of because, right, it's nothing better than kind of, you know, seeing – the results from all the hard work that you put in. So I was real proud of the kids and, and, you know, the results that they were able to accomplish this entire season, especially on Saturday. And then of course, you know, obviously one thing that really impressed me was your ground attack. I mean, like, obviously you, a lot of people, as we talked about last week on the pod, um, a lot of people look at Southfield and say, this is an all air raid team. You know what I mean? Z can run the ball, but talk about, you know, obviously your ground attack. I mean, they were really instrumental against a very good West Bloomfield defense. So talk about, you know, how your ground game has been very instrumental to your success. Yeah, we, so we kind of been practicing it all year and really brought it out for the playoffs um, because we know in November, right, you got to be able to run the ball, right? You never know what the rev is going to be like, which, by the way, we were blessed with 50 and sunny, which I'll take that any day. But, you know, it could have been snowing, raining. You never know what you're going to get here in Michigan. So, our ground game, we knew we must have, um, you know, put into play in November. Um, but again, we've been practicing all year and kind of really brought it out for the playoffs. And the boys have been executing it really well. Matthias Davis, the running back, has been huge for us. I've been really impressed with Davis's game. I mean, like, you know, what he what he did in that game against West Bluefield, what he's been doing for you guys all year long, you know, it really helps. It really takes the pressure off Zeke having to run the ball. You know, it has to. Absolutely. Um I mean, he's a 200-pound running back, man. He comes downhill, so and he does it all for us. He starts the DN, plays running back when we need him to. Um, you know, he's on kick return, kick off. I mean, whatever we need this kid to do, he's one of those senior leaders that we talk about. Um, you know, he again, mental capacity doesn't say much. He's just a hard worker, great academic kid. Um, you know, again, these kids, man, got a lot of character. So the things we ask them to do, we don't have to ask twice. Um, they're very coachable. They lead themselves. You know, I can't take this credit. It's honestly, it honestly belongs to them. And of course, you look at, of course, the play of your lines up front has been really good. You're talk about your defense. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at a lot of people look at the offense of, of AT, you look at Zeke, obviously. Talk about your defense. I mean, your defense has been really instrumental in this postseason drive for you guys. Obviously, probably much one of the most impressive games I've seen your defense play was against Chippewa Valley on the road when you held that offense who has a really good quarterback and Andrew Schuster at 14 points. So talk yeah. about how your defense has been this postseason. Yeah, man. Shout out to Rocco Foggio, my D coordinator. Uh, he puts a lot on those boys and they peaked at the right time. You know, they had some up and downs this season, some really good games, some not so much. And, and in a, the postseason for the most part, they've been pretty lights out again, going against all this great talent. Like you say, on the road versus Chippewa, talented offense versus Cass, traditional Dearborn Fortson, and and the things that he's put together, you know, as far as able to, to bring, you know, their A game every single week in the playoffs absolutely helps our offense. We've been getting things, this playoffs we haven't gotten all year. Turnovers, you know, within the 30 or within the 40 where we're able to just dr short drives. Um, he calls two turnovers with West Bloomfield. If we don't get those two turnovers, we don't win. I mean, that's just what it is, so. Our D coordinator, man, and our defense really been stepping up big time and putting together great game plans every week. And your defense is going to really be tested, um, especially in the state finals, um, coming up against a really good Belleville team. I mean, like, I know you've had to have seen the film on Belleville. 
I mean, what they've been doing to people, literally good teams. I mean, they held, they, they destroyed Celine in the district final. They beat Northville twice, um, once in the, um, in the um, KLA championship game and then in the um, regional final and then what they did to Davison. So when you look at playing a team like Belleville, what is your initial thought process when you look at them on film and any, and like, and the, and what stands out when you look at Belleville? Um, they're disciplined, man, to be honest with you. Belleville is a very athletic team, but they're also very disciplined. So, they don't make a lot of mistakes, right? The, the people who are supposed to be where they're supposed to be, they're there. Um, they're fast, they're explosive, they're big up front, they're tough. Um, so again, you know, we, we kind of take those things into consideration when playing a team, right? We kind of prey on certain teams that aren't as disciplined, but Belleville kind of has it all. And so again, hats off to them. They've been number one in the state the entire year for a reason. Um, so yeah, man, they're, they're pretty fun to watch on film. And when you look at a course there, and when you look at a course, for your defense, obviously going against their their unproven offense. Obviously, you look at a course with with Underwood at quarterback. Um, it's going to be a tall task for you. It's going to be a very interesting. Your defense is going to be really testing this matchup against this high octane Tiger offense. Absolutely. Um, you know, we we got some we got some guys on defense. You know that if if you want to be big time, this is a game to do it in. So. You know, I'm I'm actually excited about the matchups that they got, you know, on the outside. We know for sure we got to stop the run first. They got really two great running backs um, in the backfield coming downhill. So, you know, we got our work cut out for us for sure, but, you know, we'll be ready. And then, of course, on the offensive side, of course, you know, a lot of people have been looking at the matchup of the quarterback match between Underwood and Zeke. Um, when you look at, of course, Belleville defensively, um, what stands out with the Tigers defensively for you? Um, fast, man. Um, they're fast and physical. So, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have some of the offensive weapons that we have, you know, but just looking at their defense, they're very fast and they're very physical again. And they got a real disciplined defense. They play sound football. So yeah, it'd be a nice challenge for us. No doubt. And then of course you look at the teams that Belleville's beaten. I mean, like they beat Celine, they beat Northville twice. I mean, they beat Davison, of course. We know about Davison. Obviously, they like them. We know their physical team. Um, when you look at with this matchup here against them, um, when you look at this matchup here, it looks like I mean, you know, you know, people in the media are gonna say it's gonna be a tall order for you guys, and you know, you gotta you gotta come in with that mindset and say like, you know, we're we're here. You know what I mean? We're gonna we want to have that shock and roll mentality. So, what's it gonna take for Southfield Arts and Tech? to beat Belleville this weekend? Um, it's going to take all 11 on the field, man, at one time doing doing their job, um, you know, literally. So we preach that around here, man. Our motto is whatever it takes. So our, our boys, our senior-led team, man, they, they really understand, you know, the whatever it takes motto. So first, we got to have a great week of preparation, right? We got film today. We got some walkthrough stuff, install stuff going on today. You know, we'll get to work tomorrow, you know, with the with the pads and we got we got a longer extended week. So we gotta know when to dial it back and kind of give their bodies a break. We also gotta know when to get after it. So starting with a great week of practice, man, we'll we'll put us in position, right, to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Belleville, obviously you look at of course the um the, how that program's been. I mean, they've really turned it around under um Coach Jermaine Crowell. Of course, you have been up against Crowell when he was at Detroit Cast Tech under Coach Thomas Wilcher, of course, you were an awesome one of the assistant under Coach Tim Conley. Um, so talk about knowing the Belleville, knowing, knowing Belleville from your history going against Detroit Cast Tech. Um, you know, Belleville, man, again, like, but it's just a mentality. Coach Crowell, who, who kind of, you know, revamped that program, you know, he has a certain mentality. And that's one thing I do know about him, you know, personally and as a coach. Um, you know, he he's uh, expects perfection, you know what I'm saying? And he pushes those kids, coaches those kids. His coaches that he hired coaches those kids very well. Um, and, you know, Coach Norman, who took over for him, is the same way, man. Those guys are disciplined coaches, you know, who, who know what they're talking about. So, again, we I, I expect a great game. Um, you know, I expect a great battle, man, um, you know, however it may turn out. But, of course, I expect us to be on top at the end, too, though. So, mm -hmm. and then, of, we ready. 
And then, of course, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm noticing with your uniforms, you guys have worn red helmet, white jersey, and um, blue pants. I mean, like, that's been like a good uniform trend for you guys as of late. I like the trend. <laughs> I appreciate it. And that's, you know, it's funny, man. That's our seniors. I, I prefer the white on white. Yeah, I do, too. Well, I like that, too. <laughs> yeah, but I listen to my boys. My boys want the white on blue, so I go with whatever the seniors want when it comes to that uniform. They just got to tell me by Wednesday. And then we get everything ready to go for them. But no, it's they like switching things up a little bit. But this playoff so far, the white on blue been pretty good for us. I really like the white, the red helmet change. I really like when you guys went to those helmets. I mean, like just really enjoy. I really loved it. And then, and then the logo, the Warrior logo on there, that was that was awesome. I mean, like whoever made that, whoever did that design, um, awesome job. You know, what I mean, just awesome, awesome job. Um, Appreciate it. Um, before I let you go, Coach. Obviously, when you look at um. When you look at the matchup coming up, um, obviously, you know, you look at, we talked about program, we talked about, um, we talked about, I mean, like, the, the community, it's a big game, obviously, there's going to be a lot of people coming down from South, it's only a short trip to Ford Field for you guys, so what are you going to remember with this team, um, win or lose, um, after, on, um, on um, Monday morning next week? Um. Now, I'm just going to remember, you know, just the the way they're a brotherhood. You know, I mean, this football thing is one thing, and I always preach to them, you do everything you're supposed to do off the field, right? Get your grades right. I'm trying to send all my seniors to college. Um, that's what I'm going to remember most, to be honest with you. The football part take care of itself. But this is a long-lasting brotherhood that these kids have for the rest of their life, and that's what they understand. Like, you know, we all play college football. You go on, you go forth. Everything past here is a business. But in high school, this is where family is built. So, like I tell people all the time, the guys that was in my wedding standing next to me was my dudes from high school, not my boys from college, because that's the boys that I made a bond and brotherhood with early on in my life. That'll last forever. So the things that they're doing and the things they've accomplished so far, um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of. So, again, we win a championship, which is the expectation around here. That's just icing on the cake, right? But us building this bond for the rest of our life, these boys going to college, that's the ultimate goal. Um, you know, so again, we, they stay focused, man. And just being good character, young men and everything else, uh, uh, just, you know, that'll fall in place for us. Before I let you go, coach, um, obviously, um, like a final thought here, like for, um, to, um, to, to OA nation, you know what I mean? Of course the OA, OA nation is going to be right, right with you guys on Sunday night, taking on a very good, um, Belleville team. I do want to get your thoughts on Harper Woods. Of course, Harper was a team you guys played in yeah. heading into their matchup against Grand Rapids South Christian. What is your thoughts about seeing a fellow white member in the, um, in the state final, but in division four? No, man, it's awesome, man. I was um, actually hanging out with coach Rod Oden after both of our games on Saturday, you know, kind of just talking about how the year has gone and I'm super proud of him just as he's super proud of us. You know what I mean? Um, there's two OA white teams making it to the state championship, man. It's, Again, it's a testament to how great the OAA League is, um, you know, and, and just it's also a testament to how great OAA White is, you know what I'm saying? So, again, we're just really excited. Um, I'm, I'm proud of him, happy for him. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll be down there rooting him on on Saturday for sure. Okay. Um, we wish you wish you best of luck this weekend. I'm Coach, Coach Aaron Marshall. Um, thank you for joining us this week on the podcast. Wish you the best of luck on Saturday, again, uh, Sunday, us, huh? Sunday against a really good Belleville team. Thanks a lot, I appreciate it. You too. Good luck, Coach. All right. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Bye. Of course, that was Coach Aaron Marshall, the coach at Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk to Harper Woods coach Rob Odin um, to talk about the Pioneers um, and their um, clash in the Division Four state championship game on Saturday. Um, so stick to OA now, and we'll take it right back. Welcome back to OA now here. I'm Sammy Tamine here. We got the coach of the Woods. Coach Rob Odin, Coach, um, welcome back to the podcast. It's been a week. Yeah, thanks for having me back, Sammy. Glad to be here. Um, obviously, of course, last week you guys go down to Livonia and take on a very good Goodrich team. Um, of course, I kind of when I watched the um, highlights, I kind I kind of felt like you guys were playing Croswell Lex again with the um, slow start and all that. Um, talk about how that game with Goodrich went for you guys. Um. First and foremost, Goodrich is a very good football team. So the slow start was in large part to them being well prepared. 
we came out early, um, had some initial good plays in the opening drive, but we missed on some shots in, in the passing game, end up punting. So end of the first quarter, it was kind of a 0-0. We just traded punts. And mm -hmm. um, second quarter, they put a drive together and they score, so they go up 7-0. They pooch a kick, and we don't field it correctly. So, you know, we, we turn that over on a short field and they score again. So with like seven minutes left in the second, they're up 14-0. Yeah. Our offense has the ability to strike quick and um, huh, we did just that. I think we went into the half tied at 21. And so we scored three times in under seven minutes and they actually gave them the ball back with a little under a minute to go. And when you look at that score, I'm going like 14 nothing. I'm going like, so I'm going like, uh oh, you know what I mean. This is not good. And then, and then you get you gotta go all all like Kansas on me scoring like three touchdowns in seven minutes. I'm going like, this is the Harper Woods team I know. You know what I mean? So right. you're, when you're at 21, 21 at the half, you know I'm saying okay, I like I like where Harper Woods is at. And then the second half, you guys just dominated. I mean like 14 to three second half. I mean talk about that second half. Uh, second half involved some adjustments at halftime. I had to listen to the guys on the field. They said, well, coach, uh, we need to come out of base. You know, we need to go into basically what we call our bare front, which is, is kind of our goal line defense. And um, they was able to bottle up the run a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they actually forced two turnovers. So that was the key to the second half was uh, the sack fumble. And then Jacob picked off a, a screenplay to kind of clinch it for us. And then, of course, you know what I mean? Like, when I look at the stats and all that, I mean, like, uh, you had a, you had a big 79-yard touchdown pass. You had, I mean, like, the deep shots were there in that game. I mean, like, talk about, you know, the big plays that you guys made in that game against a really good Goodridge defense. I mean, that defense, they've had, they've had some games where they look pretty good. They uh, they play well. Um, we 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 kind of put them in situations with formations and splits and things to where they got to kind of uh, they got to match up. And mm -hmm. I think most teams um, will have some difficulty matching us up, Jimmy for Joe. You know, we got a dynamic group of skill guys that in one on one situations, we believe our kid is gonna win more reps than he loses. So the deep shots came down to individual wide receivers or running backs winning those matchups. And then, of course, talk about how your defense stepped up in that second half. I mean, like, obviously holding a very good Martians offense at three points. I mean, like, obviously the big pick by Jacob, obviously. Um, anybody, like, like any any other standouts of that in that second half that, that OA Nation needs to know about? Yeah, both of our defensive ends, um, which is Rory Peacock and Javante Lee Forbes. They they came off the edge with reckless abandonment, man, and, and was putting pressure on the quarterback. We knew that once we got up two scores, and I think we was up 10 or 11, they would basically have to break the power eye backfield set and get into some more traditional offense or at least try to, you know, move the ball in chunks or throw the ball. So they got to really put, you know, heavy weight on their knuckles and get after the passer. So that was the key to the second half. I think we, we had like five sacks in the second half, just getting after the quarterback. And that's huge. I mean, obviously against a team that likes to run that hot hat back eye on um, that power eye. Um, I know um, when you look at a course playing against the OAA, I mean, like I know there's a couple of teams that like to run that power eye set. Um, obviously, um, and now, uh, and now you get to move on to the Division Four State Championship. Um, talk about how making it this far has impacted the community of Harper Woods. It has. Uh, it has set the uh, community on fire. Everybody is excited. You know, everybody's out wishing us well. Uh, fans are coming out to games more. Um, it's, it's basically it's helping us transition into a a a, a school that has some some a great culture and climate you know um the community is backing us you know we look up and we see the mayor of harper woods at the games and we see you know city council members judges and and fire department employees and firefighters police officers so it's really bringing the community together it's a great year for us um we're excited about it 
you know, we look forward to building on this in future years as well. And then, of course, we look at, of course, your opponent, um, Grand Rapids South Christian. They're the defending Division Four state champions. They just knocked off Portland. Um, it was pretty convincing they knocked off Portland. So what? when you look at Grand Rapids South Christian, what is your initial thoughts when you look at the Sailors? Very well coached, and the kids play hard. Um, they have a championship pedigree. You know, they're the defending champs. And I'm telling our guys, in order to be the best, we got to beat the best. So we, we just made it through the uh, finalists, which was good, Rich. And now we got to slay the dragon. You know, they, I mean, we're the number one seed, I guess. But they're they're the big, big dogs right now until, you know, we were able to knock these guys off. They look good on film. They got some length. They uh, run so you know, they're dynamic in their offense. They move guys around. They use motion. They... We're going to have to play our A game, most definitely. We're looking forward to the opportunity. I liken them a lot to several teams in the OAA, which helps us out a lot. You know, similar skill sets and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, our week of preparation, though, we think we'll be ready. And when you look at a course, they got some players, obviously. Carson Viss, their quarterback, he he had three touchdowns, three touchdown passes against Big Rapids. Um, they do have a good running back in Charlie Schur. I mean, he had a big game also against Big Rapids. Um, but the one that really stands out for me is Jake Vermes. Of course, he's their wide receiver slash defensive back. He had three He had three touchdowns against Big Rapids and a pick six against them. And also, they were tested as well. I mean, they had to survive um, 22-14 against Grand Rapids, Forest Hills, Eastern. Um, so when you look at this team, you know, they've been battle-tested. I mean, but you guys have been through the um. You guys have been had your battles too. I mean, obviously the OA, the um, having to get play against the teams in the red, the white, obviously, and then of course your playoff run, obviously, has really prepared you for this moment. Yeah, it's definitely prepared us. And like I said, when I look at them, they have a lot of similar skill sets to teams we've played. And um, you know, the receiver, he's dynamic. I think he has almost seventeen hundred receiving yards, like twenty five touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So he definitely has to be addressed. Uh, we're glad finally to break the wing tee. You know, we get to play more traditional football, and I think we match up against these base sets pretty well. You know, very few teams are going to be able to run by us. So we're definitely looking forward to the challenge. And when you look at teams that run the wing tee, I mean, like, obviously you know that wing tee offense is a really difficult offense to stop. I mean, like, you, of course, you look at well-known teams that run it. Of course, these and West, perfect example of that. Um, but when you look at the difference of having to play against a team that runs a wing tee to playing a spread, you know what I mean, playing more of that off that zone read stuff and all that, what are what are some differences when you look at it, Coach? Well, you got to be uh, very sound in your fundamentals. You know, you got to be – reading your keys, you know, it, whether you're reading guards or tackles or whatever. So your linebackers have to play solid. Your defensive line has to help you out by not letting those double teams reach the second level because if they do, you're in trouble, you know, and you got to basically figure out what the bread and butter play is and try to take that away mm-hmm. and force them to go to plan B. And that's kind of hard when you don't see it week in and week out and you got, you know, five, six, or seven days to really hone that in. It's hard to teach your scout team to give you a great look at it. It's difficult to stop as it is. So, you know, we've, the last three weeks, we've really had to go in the lab and and, and, and do some parts of practice without a football mm-hmm. because to make sure our guys are, you know, locked in and reading their keys, they can't focus on you know, the three card money shuffle in the backfield, the mm-hmm. ball hit ball combinations. So for some of them periods, we ran the plays without a football. And when you look at a course, obviously the play of step on and um, Nate, obviously having two quarterbacks with two different um, skill sets that has to help you guys a lot. When you look, especially hanging in this game against a team that, you know, they're going to have to be preparing for two quarterbacks. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, that should put some stress and strain on them. Uh, It's been a blessing to have two guys that, you know, one, 
feed off of each other and, and support each other. It's it's not a QB battle. It's it's you know, even last like Saturday, they say, hey, coach, put Steph in and, and let's go plus one with some quarterback run stuff. You know, it's 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 those guys with the selfless sacrifice, man. And just ultimately the team goal is most important. But having to prepare for that as a coordinator, I know can be increasingly difficult. I've been really impressed with the play of obviously in this postseason with the play of both your quarterbacks. I mean, I know um, obviously, of course, a lot of people look at the two quarterback system and say like, oh, I don't know. I mean, like like one's like not playing over the other and all that. It looks like when you look at it here, both these two guys have really complimented each other really well. Absolutely. Absolutely. They they definitely are a one-two punch. It's more like a one and one eight. Them guys kind of go get it. You know, and and bounce ideas off of each other too. When they come to the sideline, or even in practice, or whatever, they're grabbing the iPads and saying, "Well, you know, come look at this. What do you think about this?" And uh, really bouncing ideas off of each other. And then, of course, you got a very good ground attack, obviously with Kobe um, running running the football. Your wide receiving game, your passing game, it's off the charts. I mean, like, so talk about you know, especially when you look at when you look at you guys offensively. Um, what's it going to take offensively against a very good Grand Rapids South Christian team, especially because you know they play in the Ottawa Kent Conference. You know that they've gone up against some good teams, obviously, but we uh, Harper Woods is as well. So, what's it going to take on an offensive side and on a defensive side against a really good Grand Rapids South Christian team? All right. Well, offensively, it's going to take our, a balanced attack. You know, it's going to take us being multiple and um, formations and things like that and us being balanced in our play call and making them defend the entire width and length of the field and do it at a tempo because we're, you know, we're trying to get a playoff every 17, 18 seconds. So they're going to have to play fast. Uh, So offensively, we're going to have to just be our authentic selves and be balanced, be fast and physical and kind of get after it. Defensively, we're going to have to lock in. We're going to have to make sure that we are assignment focused. You know, we can't have, you know, what we already know is probably the best wide receiver in the state running rampant in our secondary. So we're going to have to bracket and cover him in addition to, you know, fitting the run really well because they can do that too. So it's going to, it's going to take our best effort, you know, on both sides of the ball and even in special teams. But uh, we look forward to the challenge. And I talked to, I mean, like, and what is it going to take also? Because you know you're not going to have the experience factor on your side because Grand Rapids South Christian last year went to Ford Field. This is your first time going there. Um, the, just the nerves of the players. Um, talk about, you know what I mean, like, you know, going into an NFL stadium, going into Ford Field, um, playing in there. I mean, like, um you know, obviously going against a team that's been there. Um, you know, so how how is that going to be for you guys? It's going to be slightly different. You know, our guys, luckily for our guys, you know, Ford Field is kind of the pinnacle of Little League success in our area. So with us being so close to Ford Field, I think out of my 42 players, 38 have played in this place before in youth football. So... I don't think the lights will be too bright. You know, our guys have had, you know, off-season camps there. They they do a lot of work down there. Um, have they played in a game of this magnitude? No, but they've played in Clarkston Stadium and some really other, you know, stadiums that were packed with people. So I don't think they'll be affected by that much at all. But um, Definitely, you know, we're expecting some nerves and some jitters earlier on. We're going to try to get down there early to let them see part of the first game and take it all in before we get prepared. And when you look at, of course, from Harper Woods to Detroit, it is not that far. I mean, obviously, maybe about like 14 miles to what I believe is from here to Ford Field. I know it's a really yeah, short drive down It's there. a really short drive. We're like down there all the time. And. Different. And of course, when you look at, of course, you guys are wearing the um, you guys are wearing either your maroon uniforms or your or your black uniforms coming up. I mean, like, so talk about having to wear. Talking about the uniforms, obviously, you guys um, you guys being the home team for the um for the state finals against um Grand Rapids South Christian. 
Yeah, our guys are excited. Each week, our leadership team, which is our captains mainly, or our seniors, they select what uniform combination we're going to wear. We've been very fortunate in that area. And I think for this game, they've decided to wear all maroon. You know, these guys are spoiled, man. They got three helmets. They got nine uniform combinations. You know, shout out to my NFL alumni guys that play for me that make sure that we look great every day. But uh, being a home team is uh, is 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 an amazing opportunity. I don't know how they select that. I don't know if it's the highest seed. I think or it's playoff points. Whatever. <laughs> right. So we're excited about wearing our home maroon one last time, you know, for the 20 seniors on this team. It'll be their last opportunity to put that jersey on, so they're fired up and excited about that, and would love to go out with a state title. And obviously, of course, you know what I mean. I mean, like, it's got to be huge for you, for those seniors to go to Ford Field, especially with how you guys have been. I mean, obviously, you know, going in the OA your first year that when they were juniors. I mean, like in the second year in the OA, everything's really smoothing out for for you guys. I mean, like, so talk about the road that your senior class has had their four years well they've been resilient uh our senior class COVID year we were really down half of our team parents decided that they wasn't going to play so we had a really bad you know COVID year which was their freshman year even though everybody went to the playoffs I think we won two games or three games out of the seven uh their junior year we were a young football team we only had five seniors on last year's team so we were very young and inexperienced our first year in the OAA and, you know, scheduling had us playing, you know, in the crossovers, West Bloomfield and Adams, which were both top five teams in the state last year. And then the gauntlet of the OAA white. So we didn't win our fair share of those battles, but those experiences you can't take from the guys when you return 18 starters off a team that played in those type of ball games. These are the results you kind of get. You know, they kind of help you get over some of those initial humps. So coming into this year, we knew we had experience on our side. You know, we just needed to find a way to win those close ball games. And then, of course, you know, also being in Division Four. you know what I mean? Obviously, you know, you look at, of course, playing a much tougher competition, you know, to some of these other teams, you know, I mean, that are playing against, um, you know, teams that are in D5 or like, or like D or like other divisions, how important has that been for you guys? It is, it is the most important, you know, our guys need to be battle tested and, and to do that, you have to step outside the comfort zone. Our goal every year, including this year is, is a state championship, but we don't reinforce to our guys that you must be undefeated to get there. You know, we play each game to win, of course, but, we took three losses along the way, you know, and that's fine with us, you know, as long as we're trending in the right direction and we're learning from those losses. You know, I think some teams may get caught up in the fact that, you know, you didn't have a, 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 a seven and two record or you snuck in the playoffs with four wins or whatever. None of that matters to us. And, you know, once mm-hmm. we make the playoffs, it's kind of like everything all is even, you know, you got to lean on them experiences at that point. And we needed to make sure that, we have been punched in the mouth before, and we had to respond. I think that helped us last week when you're down 14-0, six minutes into the second quarter, and you don't flinch. Mm-hmm. So it it kind of it definitely helps in those areas for us. And then, and then of course, you know, you look at this year. You know what I mean? Like obviously, I think Grand Rapids South Christian's got three losses. I know, and I know you guys got you got three losses coming in. I mean, like obviously. You know, when you look at record wise, it kind of, it, it looks it looks like it's going to be a very interesting matchup. I mean, when you look at when you look at initially, when you look at playing, you know, I look at the term of Ric Flair to be the man. You got to beat the man. You know what I mean? And right. you kind of view Grand Rapids South Christian as, you know, the team to beat. They're the defending division. They're the defending state champions. You're coming in wanting to take the championship from them. I mean, what's it going? I mean, obviously, we answered this question earlier. I mean, like, um, and what's it going to take for Harper Woods, you know, to overcome and to knock off the champs and to earn their first ever state title? It's going to just take for us to execute our game plan, to focus on the little things and, and be disciplined 
and detail oriented. I don't think we we need to have anybody be a super athlete this week. We just need them to be their authentic selves. If they play the way they've been playing to get us here, I think we'll be just fine. You know, I, I really do. I'm not, and I mean, no knock to these guys. They're a great football team, but so are we. I have to remind our guys that, you know, as we watch this film, they got some dudes that mm-hmm. can play, but we got some dudes too. Yeah. So let's, let's not lose fact, sight of the fact that, you know, the way we've gotten here is the way we're going to win this thing. And I do want to get your also thoughts here. I talked to Coach um, Marshall about this earlier. Um, Southfield Arts and Tech is in the Division One State Final. Um, what's your thoughts on a fellow OA White member playing in the in the state championship game? OAA White Pride, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, very excited for them guys. And I know you don't know the backstory, but Brian Marshall, which is Isaiah's dad, and and I are neighbors. Like we share a driveway. Like we're next door neighbors. Have been. For, you know, Jacob and Isaiah are best friends and grew up together. So that's our sister school. So, like, Saturday afternoon, both staff celebrated making this trip together. Mm-hmm. We do a lot of things together. It just so happens that we're OA white opponents, and for seven days out of the year, we got to try to beat each other. But I'm super excited for the guys and the opportunity that they have. I know their hands are full, but... Once you reach this stage, you'll play anybody one time. And I think be, the importance of being in the OA, I mean, like being in the, being in the OA has been really instrumental to Harper Woods, obviously. So yeah. talk about, you know, I mean, the league process. I mean, like how, how that's been for you guys. I mean, like had the league got you, gotten you to this point. The league has been great to us. Um, it's, it's taught us to coach each and every game. And every play, you know, in this league, every team can play. There are no weeks off in the OAA. I liken it to the SEC. Mm-hmm. You have got to bring your A game every Friday or you risk getting beat, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the coaches are great. You know, we bounce ideas off each other. We have month, we have meetings to where we share information and things like that. So being a part of this league has been a huge step forward for us. You know, I'm glad that we did it. I'm glad that uh, we get to play the competition. We play week in and week out, and we look forward to representing this league this weekend. And, uh, and of course, before I let you go, Coach, um, what it, what would you say to OA Nation, you know, looking at Harper Woods, um, getting ready – for this weekend's um, this weekend's big game, I would just say come out and support us. You know, us in Southfield. You got one Saturday, you got one late Sunday. It's a it's a great opportunity, and I know uh, South Christian's kind of the same way. You know, with GRCC being in there as well, so their conference has two teams in the championships as well. But come out and support us. We love the league. We love the guys. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody down there on Saturday and Sunday. Coach Rob Oden. Coach Marshall is bringing his whole team to our game. And likewise, on Sunday, we'll have the buses rolling down to watch Southfield play as well. Okay, Coach Rob Oden, um, thank you for joining us this week on the podcast. Um, Good luck this weekend, obviously, taking on Grand Rapids South Christian. Um. Good luck this weekend, you guys. OA Nation will be will be supporting you guys. Obviously, the blog will also um will we will be writing the blogs and everything in the columns this week, precapping your games, um your game and also against Southern Arsenal Tech. Thank you really much, Coach Odin, for um for joining us this week on the podcast, and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Sammy. God bless. Of course, um Harper Woods, Coach um. Coach Rob Oden, um, that was on the pod this week here. Obviously, we talked to Coach Marshall. Um, we're going to do my projections in a little bit here. Um, we're going to also talk about um, what happened at Berkeley High School. Of course, um, Sean Shields stepping down as coach at Berkeley. Um, it was a rough year for Berkeley this year. Went 0-9. Um, you know, just really struggled. And I know, um, I know there were a lot of off-the-field stuff that there were some issues with. Um, so, you know, Coach Shields stepped down, um, from coaching. Um, when you look at a course, when you look at a course this year for Berkeley, it was, 
it was a difficult year for them. I mean, it really was a, you know, they, the last two years, I mean, they really struggled. I mean, like, and, and it was, and it was tough. I mean, like, you know, you look at, of course, going 0-9 is not fun. It is not fun going 0-9. I mean, because you notice, you know, and I, and I noticed that when you look at the, the scores that they had, I mean, they had some really tough losses on there as well. So when you look at A&T, um, <laughs> no, when you look at Berkeley, um, they've had some tough losses. So I will be very curious to see who takes over that program because when you look at Berkeley, there is some players there. There is some proven experience there, but there's going to be, there's some question marks when you look at the direction of the program. Where is it going to go? I mean, there is some question marks. So <laughs> I am really curious to see how, um, you know, how Berkeley approaches their new, their new, their new hire. I mean, I'm very curious to see what happens there. We're going to keep an eye on it. Obviously when you look at, um, we're going to keep an eye on it. Um, on the um, Berkeley situation. I think when you look at Berkeley, the sit, the program, the, um, what they need there is somebody to stabilize the program. Um, there is proven playmakers on that team. It's just got to develop some confidence. And I think obviously, you know, the last, you know, the last, I mean, like um, in 2020, 2021 under coach Sean Shields, um, they had a lot of confidence. They had a lot of, you know, they had a lot of, um, you know, they got the postseason both years. I mean, they had, they had proven playmakers. I mean, like obviously Jake, the Dabowski brothers were really instrumental in that. But last year, was kind of like <laughs> you kind of thought they would make the next step, but then they unexpectedly struggled. And then this year they really struggled going 0 9. I mean, like, so there's going to be some questions with that program. So I'm curious to see what direction Berkeley goes with their new coach, who is going to be the guy there. Um, and obviously, of course, you know. They've got to develop that program and develop some competence with these young athletes. And I think that's going to be the key for athletic director Taylor Horn to go with is can he find the right choice? That's the big question when you look at with Berkeley um, heading into next year. I mean, like, you know, that is the question. Competence, competence, competence is going to be the question mark for for Berkeley next year. I mean, if they can find the, find that right guy, um, then I think Berkeley could be right back in the thick of the conversation. So, you know, so a lot to keep an eye on with Berkeley. Um, it's something to really keep an eye on. And, you know, when you go 0-9, you know, you've hit rock bottom, but there's always a way up. So that's something to really, really look at for Berkeley um, going forward there is um, can they find the right coach in place? And can they – um, and can they – um you know, you know, get back to where we're expecting Berkeley to be near the top of the blue, competing for a division title, um, you know, getting in the postseason. I mean, I think that would be a really, it'd be really interesting to see what happens there with Berkeley going forward there. So we'll see what happens. Um, but we'll keep an eye on it as we always do. Um, let's go now from football to volleyball. Um, volleyball season just ended, um, on Saturday. Um, Clarkston made the final four. Um, they took on, um, they got, they knocked out Macomb last cruise, um, North in the quarterfinals, um, behind the play of Kayla Kogan, um, who came back from it. I mean, who, who battled back from an ACL injury. Um, she hurt last year against Birmingham Marion. Um, so they went into Battle Creek at the Kellogg's, um, Kellogg's arena. Um, um, it's the third time, in school history for Clarkson that they've been in this round. Um, but if they would have won against Farm Hills Mercy, it would have been the first trip to the state final for them. Now, unfortunately, they took on Farm Hills Mercy. It was a – Farm Hills Mercy, we know, is a really good team. Um, Well-coached program under Coach Loretta Vogel. Um, and then what happened was Clarkson was leading early. Um, they got it with the – they were up 20-14 to 14 at one point, and then just everything – and then the, – and then the wheels just fell off. Um, and then Farm Tills Mercy ended up winning in three games. Um, you know, stunning Clarkston. I'm um, 25. Um, 
I mean, like, I don't have the scoring with me, but it was it was shocking to say the least. I mean, like, obviously, with what happened to them, how they got Clarkson out of rotate out of system, um, just the play of their big inside. Um, I mean, like, she was dominant for them, um, and it was just it was shocking, you know, to see you know Clarkson um get overwhelmed with it. I've never seen a Clarkson team. You know, viable program, viable team get overwhelmed like they did against Parsons Mercy. I've never seen that. Um, so when you look at Clarkston um, heading into next year, I still think when you look at the Wolves next year, they're still the best team in the OA because of who they got back. You got New Black coming back. You have um, obviously you have um, you have Marley Smith coming back. I mean, you got proven players and their program strength is very good at Clarkston. And let's not forget, a lot of these girls at Clarkson, they do play high club volleyball. So, when you look at the Wolves, I mean, like, they should be back next year. They should be back. But, like I said, it's going to depend on how the districts get placed in June. It's going to depend on how everything goes. I mean, who knows? The MHA could send Clarkston, you know, they. I mean, they could separate Clarkson and Lake Orion like they did back in 2012. I remember that. And... You know, both those teams end up meeting the state semifinals. Um, you know, obviously Lake Orion went east, Clarkson went west, and you know, look how that one ended up. Um, so for Coach Allison Smith, I mean, like, um, you know, they had a great year. I mean, they had a really good year. I mean, obviously, you know, with the experience they had back, they have Kayla Kogan. They had Kayla Kogan. Um, she had a bounce back year after an ACL injury, um, winning the red. Um, was very instrumental for Coach Allison Smith. Um, you know, winning the district title, winning the regional, um, getting the state court, getting the final four. Um, obviously overcoming their state quarterfinal, you know, state quarterfinal laps, and then they got back into it. Um, back to Battle Creek. So, you know, it was a good run for Coach Allison Smith and their team. Really good run for them. Um, I expect Clarks to be back in the thick of it heading into next year. So we'll see what happens going forward with Clarkson. Um, you know, but I think Clarkson will be back now. When you look at volleyball next year, obviously you gotta look at of course Birmingham. Marion's still gonna be there. They're gonna be they're gonna have a lot more experience. Farm Tills Mercy, they'll always be there. Northville is a team that, you know, obviously I remember their loss to um Grand Rapids Forest Hill um Northern. I still cannot believe Northville lost that game. And, you know, and I know that they've been saying they'll be back, and they do got a lot of experience coming back, which is going to help them next year. But when you look at a course with Northville, there's always that Novi factor in there, and I think Northville and Novi are going to really battle it out for that one spot, you know what I mean, too, in the KLA, also in the postseason as well. So, you know, I expect Northville to be back, but also, but they're going to have to go through Novi, um, maybe Temperance Bedford as well. Um, you know, in the postseason next year. So I expect Northville to be back. I expect, you know, Farm Tills Mercy to be back. Birmingham Marion could be a player again. Clarkson will be there. Um, you know, I mean, like, but I'm curious to see, you know, who, what teams really step up next year um, in the OA, obviously to challenge Clarkson. And, but I still think when I look at it for next year, I think Clarkson's still the best team in this league. So, It'll be very interesting to see what happens with them going forward. And I think it'll be really curious to see what happens with them, um, you know, you know, heading into next year. So, of course, we're it, we're getting really close to the start of basketball season, obviously. Of course, I will um, post the basketball previews. Of course, the boys will be coming up sometime this week. Um, the girls will be up next week. Um, of course, we'll be getting real. We're getting we're getting there to the start of basketball season, of course, and. You know, and I th- I'm curious to see what happens. Um, of course, basketball coaches, if you are interested in an interview um, on um, on um, Twitter, um, feel free to DM me. Of course, I'm at Saginaw Bay. Um, so I'm um, obviously heading into the year for basketball season. Of course, the boys will be printed up this weekend. Um, the, the girls will be starting up next weekend. So a lot to look at on this Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving week um, when you look at it here. Um, here are my projections for this week for this week's matchups. Um, let's go to Division Four first. I mean, that'll be playing on a Saturday afternoon, one o'clock, um, between Harper Woods and Grand Rapids South Christian. 
Um, I look at it the term of Ric Flair. And to be the man, you got to beat the man. Grand Rapids South Christian is the defending Division Four state champions. They have played a tough schedule. They have proven court. They have proven players. Carson Bitts is a very good quarterback. Jake Vermis, we know a lot about him, what he's done, especially against Big Rapids when he had that big game against them. Charlie Schur, very good running back. They had to survive 22-14 against Grand Rapids Forest Hills Eastern. But when you look at the schedule Harper Woods has played, you look at the teams they played. Lake Ori, Clarkston, Harper, uh, Southfield Arts and Tech. You look at Groves. You look at playing Roseville. That's just, that's just, and then you look at other teams like Stony Creek, Rochester, proven teams. They've even played Adams and West Bloomfield. Not this year, but they played those two teams last year. Playing in the white and playing those teams this year, like Lake Orion and Clarkston, is going to get a team like Harper Woods ready. It's going to get them ready. You have proven experience. You have a two-quarterback system that has comp- complemented each other very well. You have, you have a proven running back. Your wide receivers are very good. Your defense is phenomenal. And yet, this team has overcome so much. This team has overcome so much to get to this point. And when you look at, when you look at how Harper Woods has been, they played a tough schedule. Year in, year out. Even before they went to the OA. And in this game here, I think Harper Woods, they're going to bring a lot of people down down there. They're going to bring a lot of people to, to Detroit. They're going to bring a lot of people there. It's only a short drive. And I think the Harper Woods community is going to show out in full. And I think the Pioneers are going to win the Division Four State Championship this year. The reason why? The schedule and experience. Could you just imagine? You know, I mean, obviously, yeah, Grand Rapids South Christian, they're very good. They got some really good players. They played a tough schedule. But I think when you look at this matchup here, I think Harper Woods has enough defensively to shut down um, Viss and Vermis, their combination there. And I think if it comes down to a ground attack and they can stay penalty free, I think Harper Woods, with the talent they have, will go in and win this, day, go in and win this game. I really think they will. I mean, I, I like where this team's at. Their program strengths there. They got proven proven experience. And I really like where the I like the pioneers in this game. I think I think Harper Woods is gonna surprise some people. And I think they're gonna and I think they're gonna make a statement here. And I think they're gonna put division four on notice when they beat Grand Rapids South Christian. So I like Harper Woods over Grand Rapids South Christian in this one. Division one Safi Arson Tech against Belleville. This is going to be a tall order. This is going to be a really tall order for Zeke and company at Safi Arson Tech. Their defensive coordinator is going to get tested in this game against Belleville. I mean, Belleville is the number one ranked team in the state for a reason. They can beat you in so many different ways. They beat Davidson on the ground last week, and, they, and the big play beat him. They've knocked off Celine. They've knocked off Northville twice. And they just knocked off Davis. So when you look at this matchup, a lot of things got to go right for a and to win this game. A lot of things. And to knock off a team like Belleville, A&T, A&T is going to have to play their best game of the season. They're going to have to. And when you look at this matchup, a and T's got experience. They played against a good against really good teams. They played against West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield, really good team. I mean, they lose a lot of talent. Um, you know, West. I mean, I mean, West Bloomfield, really good team. This is going to be a tall order for A and T against Belleville, but they have a shot. Zeke's going to have to play well. Tashi Bracewell is going to have to play well. Jawan Jarrett is going to have to play well. They got to have balance. If they can find that balance, if they can find that magic, and if defensively, they have to step up defensively 
and play some of their best football there. If they can do all that, I think they have a shot against Belleville. Do I see it? I know this is going to kill me, and this is going to break my heart. But I don't know if I see it. Because Belleville's experience, their big playability, that could be the difference maker in this game. Um, but I think A&T is going to fight, and I think it's going to come down to the last possession. I think A&T fights in this game. I think this is a 42-35 game. Or 42-38 game. I got to go Belleville. Close. Really, really close. So, we'll see what happens. I hope I'm wrong in this game. I really do. I really do. And, and I hope Coach Aaron Marshall and Coach Rob Owen are both holding state championships this weekend. I really want that to happen. But it's going to be a tall order. For both teams. Harper Woods and Southfield. My message to them is this. The quote from Ric Flair. To be the man. You got to beat the man. You got to beat the man. You're too, both teams are going up against. Defending state champions this weekend. It's a tall task. But if, there, but if I have confidence. In two teams that can get it done. This weekend. It's Southfield Arts and Tech. In Harper Woods. My message is this. To be the man. You got to beat the man. And that's my message. To both the Warriors. And the Pioneers. This weekend. At Ford Field. All right. I want to sign off here. Uh, make sure you follow the blog. At Tango Bay 4650. At blogspot.com. For the latest information. Around the OA. And also. We're going to. We're also going to. Have the basketball preview up. Coming up this weekend. Um, want to wish everybody. A happy Thanksgiving. OA Nation. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care, God bless, and I will see you all next week. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. God bless all, and wish everybody the best of luck, and especially the Pioneers and the Warriors the best of luck in their state final games this weekend. God bless them. <laughs>